welcome. PAC 18, thanks for helping and serving today. We appreciate you coming. A uh, couple, I actually got three things uh, this morning. I won't take that, won't take that long. Uh, <laughs> recently, uh, we've actually uh, connected, our mission team uh, and the outreach team have connected with the local Rappahannock Area Boys and Girls Club. If you're not aware, it's actually about a 10 minute walk from here. So it's right, pretty much right in our backyard. So we re we've connected with the uh, executive director there and we actually would, are trying to set up a few things going forward where we're serving with them on, on a regular basis. But there's a few immediate needs coming up this week. They are actually having their banquet this week and it starts, it's actually Thursday night, but they've rented this place for about three days. So we have a group, Chuck and Art and a few other folks are going over there on Wednesday. Uh, Steve, you going with them too? Thank you. Um, to help set up on Wednesday, Thursday night, I'm taking a group over there. We're gonna actually help serve the food on Thursday night. But we still have a need on Saturday. They're having what they call Christian, Christian party day and they're looking for some folks to help during the daytime with some games and prizes and things like that. I know Chuck's going over there and Art's committed to going there Saturday, but we need about four more people. We need two people to grill out, grill food and the rest to kind of supervise some games and stuff. So if you're interested, it's June 1st, this coming Saturday, please see Chuck or see myself uh, or Art this week, but uh, we're looking for about four more people on Saturday upcoming. Second thing is, um, we have many ministries here at Fairview um, and opportunities to both serve but also just get involved. Um, everything from the food pantry to the men's group on Saturday morning as well as Sunday school or, or a small group. Chuck and I run a small group on Monday nights. Uh, we're, we, we welcome new, new folks to that. Um, to just, I need a few more people on my outreach team. Point is, if you wanna be involved, we're a pretty active church. I talk to other people that go to other churches and I would argue that Fairview is as active as anybody else out there. Uh, there's a lot of opportunity to get involved in both serving and just growing in your faith. I encourage you to uh, reach out and join. If you're not involved, reach out to somebody and get involved. I certainly will plug you in if you have the interest. So lastly, this morning, I'm going to talk about just uh, give a little testimony. Um, if you're not aware, I'm in sales. I drive around a lot. I have a lot of windshield time. And if you're also not aware, I'm a pretty political guy. Um, I listen to talk radio. I see Gary smiling back there all the time. But I will tell you the downside to doing that, sometimes you, your blood pressure raises up, does it not? You know, just watching the news at night. So I, I will go dark on politics uh, for, you know, for a few weeks at a time, both watching at night and driving around. And, and I actually uh, will turn on the positive hit station. I'm sure most people are aware of that. And I will tell you the difference in my attitude between listening to something positive versus getting my blood pressure up because we're spending too much money as a country is night and day. Um, I, I notice a difference when I'm addressing my customers. I notice a difference when I'm I'm seeing my family, uh, Taylor sitting over there, she'll tell you that, uh, you know, I, I'm a sinner, <laughs> you know, I can get a, a fired up over politics, but I, I have a better day when I am keeping myself in the word through listening to music or testimony or praying. I will also uh, tell you that, uh, you know, if I go a day or two without praying, uh, which doesn't happen often, but my, my mood is not quite what it is. So I, I will tell you, pray every day, pray every night, pray. I pray while I'm driving occasionally. Now I'll tell you, I'm not blind. I'm not putting my head down, I'm paying attention. But uh, you know, when I know I'm gonna have a challenging appointment with a customer who may be dissatisfied with something that we've done or, or haven't done, um, I, I will pray for an open heart conversation when I get there. And I will tell you the good Lord I can't really remember too many times where he hadn't come through for me. So I would encourage you today, if you're somebody like me that has a lot of windshield time, those are going up 95, that can be stressful in itself, especially nowadays. Uh, 
turn something positive on, whether it's listening to music or just Christian radio or, or, or go to the Lord in prayer as you're moving around throughout your day. And I would tell you that your day will probably be a much more positive um, environment, both in your heart, but also to your to the people you engage on, on a daily basis. So I encourage you to do that as well. Hey, thank you for your time this morning. Have a great memorial afternoon. Hey, can we pray real quick? Lord God, we just thank you for meeting us here. We thank you for um, those that created this great country. You, Lord, we know you created our country, but those that protect the freedoms that we enjoy. We raise up those that from the beginning, back in 1776, all the way through now, those that have passed away, been killed, those families left behind, then and now. Lord, as we uh, walk from here, let us take something out of your word through the sermon, through the song, through the fellowship. And we pray this in your son's holy name. Amen. Thank you. Mary, appreciate that. Thank you to PAC 18. They took off the offering well. Thank you all. Yeah. <laughs> Y'all didn't keep anything, did you? All right. You're good then. That's all I tell new people to take up the offering. You, you can't mess it up unless you take some home with you. So you did well. Thank you so much. Well, this morning, let me uh, share with you a few words about uh, we're looking at the journey to how to become more of a spiritual Christian, that we believed in Christ, and, and what are those things that we really need to work on to become more and more Christ-like. And today, let me share with you about renewing your mind. Renewing your mind. Uh, Russ, do we have a slide? Ah, there we go. Um, I see uh, 80,000 up there, and I'm sure many of you can uh, deduce what that 80,000 is, possibly. But let's face it, our minds are always at work. And what this 80,000 means is that experts estimate that our minds think between 60 and 80,000 thoughts a day. <clears throat> Isn't that amazing? Did uh, you never thought that you thought that much? That's an average of 2,500 to 3,000 thoughts per hour. That's incredible. Now, on one hand, this confirms how we are wonderfully and intricately created by our great God. Creation never seems to amaze me that these things could never happen by chance, that we have an eternal loving creator. On the other hand, it, it gives me great pause and makes me wonder how it is we can ever place these thoughts under the Lordship of Jesus Christ. And that's what Christ asks us to do. And in fact, God asks us as believers in order to live a spiritual life to become more and more like Jesus is to put as many of our thoughts in our head under the leadership of Jesus. Now, the Bible shares this with us uh, probably most plainly in Romans chapter 12, verses 1 and 2. Many of you know this verse. I put it up on the screen for you. But the Apostle Paul says, Therefore I urge you, brothers and sisters, in view of God's mercy, to offer your bodies as a living sacrifice, holy and pleasing to God. This is your true and proper worship. Do not conform to the pattern of this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your, what? Your mind. By the renewing of your mind. Then you will be able to test and approve what God's will is his good, pleasing, 
and perfect will. So how does Paul say we can discipline ourselves to not be conformed by our culture, but on the other hand, be transformed into the likeness of Jesus? It's by renewing our minds, renewing all of those thoughts that we have. So how can we do that? How can we renew our minds to become more like the mind of Christ? Let me share a few ways that we can do that and how we can do that to explain all of those thoughts that are going on in our heads. First of all, Scripture says that really we can't do it as men and women, that we have to first rely on the Holy Spirit we have to rely on the Holy Spirit that's within us to transform our minds. The reason we have to do this is that as men and women, boys and girls, we have this natural way of thinking that our human minds pull us in one direction. The Bible calls this the natural person. And this passage from Ephesians 4 kind of gives us an idea about this. Paul says, so I tell you this and insist on it in the Lord that you must no longer live as the Gentiles do in the futility of their thinking. Thinking as the natural man, the natural woman, is futile. They are darkened in their understanding and separated from the life of God because of the ignorance that is in them due to the hardening of their hearts. In other words, it's frustrating when we are battling ourselves internally. It's frustrating when we cannot shut off our thinking. Have you ever found yourself in that instance? You know, at times we cannot pull ourselves away from thinking negatively. Those times when we can't just shut our minds off and we're always thinking of the worst case scenario. When we're always thinking and we're over focused on maybe an argument we just had. We're thinking all the times and our thoughts just keep us angry and forever angry and we can never settle down. Or maybe our thoughts lead to depression and despondency. Maybe our overthinking leads to worry and anxiety. My wife Tammy in June is going to do some mental health seminars on Wednesday night. Hope you saw that. One on grief and one on anxiety and depression because she sees that all the time as a professional counselor. The third week will be on mental disorders that her and my daughter, who's a counselor, see in children. But a lot of these come with the overactive mind. Those 80,000 thoughts that are going all the time. And scripture reminds us that it's nearly impossible to achieve victory over this destructive and negative thinking by ourselves. In fact, I would say it probably is impossible that we need the help of the Holy Spirit that comes from us asking Jesus into our life. To try to do it other ways is futile. You know, our minds are, are one way to look at it and our thinking are like rudders of a ship. The rudder of our ship that's on this spiritual journey. And the rudder steers which way the ship or the boat goes, doesn't it? The Holy Spirit is going to be in charge or we're going to be in charge. And that's going to take us which direction. And that rudder is important. Now, when Tammy and I were, we had been married a while because Amanda was a preschooler. Josh was still not quite preschooler. He was still an infant. We went up to this minister family retreat up in Oak Hill is at Oak Hill Academy, one of our Virginia Baptist schools, way up in the mountains of Virginia. 
Man, they had all kinds of great activities. We went horseback riding. And one of the things we did is we got the canoe part of this little minor, this little river that had just minor rapids in it. And we canoed it. And so uh, Tammy and I got in our canoe. We had one of the kids in the middle. And I was in the back and she was in the front. And so we tried to navigate this river and missed these rocks uh, on this canoe. Now, what we found out is I was paddling one direction and she was paddling another direction and we hit every rock. And uh, sometimes we turned sideways, sometimes we spun around. It's only by the grace of God we didn't flip over. And, um, what, and, and you know, the, um, the discussion going on during this was uh, probably not um, what husbands and wives, the way they should be talking to each other. You know, you're going this way and I'm going that way. And so finally we figured is that whoever's in the back has to use that paddle as a runner. And by putting it one way or the other, we could actually control the direction of the canoe. It was a hard lesson, but after about six months of therapy, we were okay. <laughs> I'm just kidding. That's the way our minds work, isn't it? Is that our minds are the rudder of what we're going to think about and what direction we're going to go, godly, natural person. The good news is, is that for the Christian, we also, we have, we have this natural person in us, this natural tendency to think negatively, to think uh, the wrong thoughts. But we also have the power within us to give us victory in our thoughts. Second Corinthians chapter uh, uh, 10, verse 3 says this, For though we live in the world, we do not wage war as the world does. The weapons we fight with are not the weapons of the world. On the contrary, they have divine power to demolish strongholds. Isn't that good news? That we don't fight with the weapons of this world. That we have divine weapons. We have the holy, true God within us that's promising to help us to get through this battle with our minds. We demolish arguments and every pretension that sets itself up against the knowledge of God. And we take captive every thought and make it obedient to Christ. You see that idea and command of Scripture again? Making every thought obedient to Christ. To have our goal to have the mind of Jesus, and we have the Spirit to help us. Our goal, then, is to replace our worldly thoughts with the mind of Jesus, and Scripture shares that with us. Colossians 3 says, Since then you have been raised with Christ, set your hearts on things above where Christ is, seated at the right hand of God. Now, we've talked a lot about what not to think about. Here you go in verse 2. What do you think about? Set your minds on things above, not on earthly things, for you died and your life is now hidden with Christ in God. And so, finally, brothers and sisters, whatever is true, whatever is noble, Whatever is right, whatever is pure, whatever is lovely, whatever is admirable, if anything is excellent or praiseworthy, think about such things. Can you close your eyes and imagine what your outlook, your attitude, your relationships, your success in life would be like, your family life, if your dominant thoughts were like these that are on the screen? 
instead of some of the stuff we all think about? Do you think the good Lord knows what he's talking about? <laughs> Let me go back. I'm not quite ready for that. You've got to be here a little longer. <clears throat> Can you imagine what you and I could accomplish for the kingdom of God if we're all growing daily into the mind of Christ? So how do you begin to do this? I think maybe some were thinking about, all right, how do I get this done? Got somebody to help me? The Spirit? I know I'm battling this all the time in my life. And what the old computer program adage was what? Garbage in, garbage out. You put, you do bad programming in your computer, you uh, put garbage in there, and what you're going to get is garbage out. You know, our thoughts are like that too, aren't they? Common sense, isn't it? Really spiritual sense. How do you fill your minds up? And what do you fill your minds up with during the day? And that's why I asked Billy to share. There's a lot of things we can fill our minds up with, isn't it? Politics, news favorite television shows, uh, our favorite genre of music, surfing the internet, whatever you surf about, makes you think about different things, what you read. And so the baby step is, the Christian step is, the spiritual step is, is can you begin to replace some of these thought moments and replace them with some thoughts of God? Christian radio station when you're driving around. You know, you, if you don't know, you got control of that little dial or that buttons on your. You, I think nowadays you can even program your radio, and you hit a button and you get a certain radio station, can't you? Quiet time, prayer, Bible study uplifting conversations with other Christians. You say I emphasize uplifting? We can have a lot of conversations in Bible study and with other Christians that ain't too uplifting, can we? But as Billy shared with you, he sees a difference in his outlook, his attitude, his family life, his witness, that the times when he focuses on putting Christ in and not these other things. And we don't, don't always win that battle, do we? You know, I mean, if Billy can do it, anybody can do it. A day or two. That's, that's why I asked him to share, you know? <laughs> but, you know, what we're doing is the more we try to do that, we're back to Romans 12, we're renewing our minds to the things of God, to the things of Jesus. And it's a day-by-day, a day, hour by hour, moment by moment struggle. But habits form, don't they? And the more you try to make it a habit of those Christian disciplines, the more you're going to see overall your mind's being renewed towards leaving the mind of Christ. Because remember, you have about 80,000 thoughts a day. Wow. And how many of those 80,000 thoughts a day are you willing to turn over to Christ and the Holy Spirit? Even if you turn a fourth of them over, that's 20,000 thoughts, right? I hope my math is good. I'm not real good at that. Check up on me, Bonnie. You're the <laughs> math and science mind here. You know, even if we start and just have a fourth, what changes this world we can make in this world? We can do it. We want to be spiritual Christians. You know, and not just go through the motions. 
So I encourage and challenge you to um, to take one step this week. Find one way, one time in your life, and maybe a good time is when you're really in a negative mood, having negative thoughts. What can you do to turn that around quickly? Listen to something positive. Listen to something of the Lord. Read something of God. Renew your mind and have the mind of Jesus Christ. He set this up so you can have the best quality of life you can. Let's pray together. Lord Jesus, thank you for your word through the servant Paul today. We know we have our work cut out for us because we all here know the thoughts we have. We don't have to share them with one another. We all struggle in an area or another. Transform through your Holy Spirit our thoughts that we may become more like you and share with others the good news of salvation in Jesus name